today's topic is uh, fuel cell in particular the solid oxide fuel cell which is supposed to be <coughs> sorry which is supposed to be uh, the all ceramic fuel cell and a very important area of application for advanced ceramics. It is in the energy sector, environment and energy sector and uh, let us try to discuss the materials used, the principle and why this particular topic is so important to us. So, we will be discussing the solid oxide fuel cell and uh, first of all we must know what is a fuel cell that is quite obvious. The fuel cell is an electrochemical cell, it is an electrochemical device which generates electrical power continuously as a gaseous fuel is electro electrochemically burnt in a continuous manner. So, as the name suggests there is a fuel which is burnt not normally burnt it has its own calorific value no doubt, but it is burnt in an electrochemical system and therefore, it is uh, generating a power generating a voltage and of course, you can also draw some current through this. So, it becomes a power system or a conversion device energy conversion device from the fuel energy to the electrical power. So, that is what we uh, know about fuel cell. In short, what are the characteristics of a fuel cell? As has been mentioned, it is an electrochemical device, generates electricity, requires a continuous flow of reactants. As you have mentioned, we will have a fuel and that will be oxidized and that will be burnt electrochemically. So, uh, two reactants are necessary one is the fuel a gaseous fuel of course, not a solid fuel in this case uh, it can only take up uh, gaseous fuels and uh, a oxidant normally air. Uses pure hydrogen, hydrogen gas or hydrocarbons as the fuel. So, depending on the uh, particular type of variety of fuel cell uh, it may use hydrogen or hydrocarbons which can be burned electrochemically. The use of hydrocarbons may require a reformer. Ultimately, the hydrocarbon uh, has to be uh, catalyzed or it has to be dissociated into a mixture of uh, hydrogen and carbon monoxide or some other hydrocarbon. So, that part uh, is done by a, a device uh, called reformer. So, when although hydrocarbons can be used in principle, but ultimately it has to be converted into hydrocarbon hydrogen uh, for certain variety of fuel cells, but in other variety one can also use carbon monoxide. Basic fuel cells contain an anode, cathode and electrolyte as shown here uh, as it is mentioned it is an electrochemical cell. So, uh, we have to have a anode an electrolyte and a cathode. Well, we have discussed earlier the very principle of an a oxygen ion conductor and measurement of oxygen power cell pressure. Okay. So, the same principle applies when you talk about solid oxide fuel cell in particular, we will be discussing few other fuel cells, but this, this principle or the nounced equation in this case it is basically uh, applies to uh, the solid oxide fuel cell, uh, but very similar thing also applies to other fuel cells. So, the same equation we have a uh, electrolyte in between incidentally it is an oxygen ion conductor here and you have partial pressure one partial pressure on the other side or the chemical potential of the oxygen and a different chemical potential on the other side and therefore, you will get an EMF. So, this was used uh, in connection with the oxygen sensor using a zirconium dioxide the basic base basic principle is same. So, instead of uh, just measuring the open circuit EMF we can draw some current through that and that is what is called the fuel cell. 
So, we can use the same thing as a source of power. Well, you can uh, we can have a look at it uh, the history of fuel cell, it is not a uh, very recent concept, the concept is as old as 150 years old and the um, fuel cell was first demonstrated uh, in 1839 by Sir William Grove, who tried to reverse the phenomena of water splitting by applying electric field and to, to, uh, to, generate, to, generate, to generate hydrogen and oxygen. So, by that time the splitting of water was known and uh, 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 perhaps Sir William Groves tried to think if by supplying electricity one can generate hydrogen and oxygen, is it possible to reverse the reaction and uh, combine hydrogen and oxygen to get the electricity. That was his idea and that is he actually uh, was successful in doing that he termed the device as gas voltaic meter, a battery. So, by the time basically he was working on battery, so he termed it as gas voltaic battery, but the term fuel cell was coined much later in 19, 1889 uh, by uh, Ludwig Mond and Charles Langer. So, that was one part of the history and then fuel cell was first put to use in 60s. In, uh, in the last century 1960s uh, to provide electricity on board the Gemini and Apollo spacecrafts. So, one of the reason why fuel cell was used because it is a uh, power to weight ratio is very high. So, you can from the same weight per unit weight one can generate much long much larger uh, electrical power and uh, therefore, one can use uh, this uh, on spacecrafts where the weight is an important criteria. Uh, during the 1970s, the fuel cell technology was developed for systems on earth. Okay. Uh, looking at the success uh, of the space missions, uh, Gemini and Apollo spacecraft missions, uh, people found that yes, the technology can it be used uh, on the uh, on earth also for our own purposes. Uh, because uh, there is a shortage of um, fossil fuels and whether it can be an alternative source of fuel, an alternative source of energy. So, that was the first time in 1970s people started developing a commercial way. Of course, the commercialization is still to continue uh, still to be achieved, but a very strong research activity went in for developing uh, power systems based on fuel cells. Then during 1980s, it began to be tested for the purpose of utilities and automobile sector particularly, particularly because the idea of running an automobile with electrical power or battery power was still on, but it was not successful because the power to weight ratio of normal lead acid batteries are very high uh, or very low in a sense. So, it was not very commercially successful. So, with the with the research activity or the uh, development of fuel cell, one could think that uh, a captive power station, either a captive power station or a automobile can be run uh, with these kind of power systems. So, that is the history, still the research is going on in a very, very uh, um, active manner. And, uh, but it is a power source basically. So, another kind of power source as mentioned is battery. Okay, battery is also a source of power, electrical power in a small way and fuel cell is also a very identical or a, a analogous way one can generate power from the fuel cell as well. So, can we have a look at what are the differences between a battery? It is not actually a battery, uh, it is a different kind of power system and uh, these are the uh, characteristics of the battery as well as fuel cell. Uh, battery generates power electrochemically, in fact both of them uh, generates power electrochemically, both of them are electrochemical cells. Electrodes in battery are working materials, whereas working materials in the sense the electrode itself is a actually source of the energy. So, the certain amount of certain uh, chemicals 
or metals are used as the electrodes here. Whereas, in case of fuel cell uh, one cannot do that because uh, basically the reactants are gases. So, gases as such cannot be used as a current collector or uh, a contacts. So, one needs uh, a different kind other materials. So, the gases are the working electrodes working materials and therefore, we need an additional set of materials to act as a uh, electrical contacts or current collectors. In case of battery electrodes get consumed whereas, in case of fuel cell the electrodes do not get consumed. If we assume that the reactants the hydrogen or the fuel as well as the oxidant are actually the electrodes they do not get consumed sorry I am sorry uh, it is not like that the electrodes are actually the contacts here it is said the electrodes are the contacts. So, the contacts do not get consumed it is the reactants uh, the fuel and the oxidant uh, which gets consumed in a continuous manner. Uh, the basic electrodes remain same electrodes in the sense here we are talking about the contacts and the current collectors. Limited operation because as long as particularly in a battery uh, as long as the chemicals are available uh, uh, it, it will produce power once the chemicals uh, are consumed and converted to a different kind of products then uh, the source of power is lost. So, the power will not be available anymore. In case of fuel cell one can get continuously generate power as long as one can supply the fuel and the oxidant on two sides of the fuel cell. So, one becomes the cathode another becomes the anode. So, one can say here you have supplying air from one side and the gas from the other side and this is the system in which the power is getting generated. So, this is one electrode and that is one electrode, but the actual uh, the working electrodes are actually the air and the uh, oxygen or the, uh, or the uh, uh, fuels, fuels hydrogen or carbon monoxide. Uh, it is basically a battery is basically a storage device ok. It stores the energy chemical potential and the chemical energy and which can be converted on site uh, into a electrical power whereas, this is a conversion device ok. It is basically a conversion device it does not store the power uh, because the uh, chemicals the source of energy is outside the system uh, whereas, in a battery the source of energy is within the system. So, that is the differences between a battery and a fuel cell although both of them are basically an electrochemical devices. Well, based on these principles we have several types of uh, fuel cells. Uh, they are termed in this manner alkanyl fuel cell, direct methanol fuel cell uh, that primarily depends on either the electrolyte kind of electrolyte used or the kind of uh, fuel uh, one use uh, in, in these cells or a phosphoric acid fuel cell they are in short term uh, the terminology is AFC, DMFC, PAFC or proton or polymer exchange membrane fuel cell. Polymer exchange membrane fuel cell is PEMFC ok. Uh, molten carbonate fuel cell and finally, uh, the topic of our interest uh, as ceramists uh, or under the course of advanced ceramics our primary interest is here solid oxide fuel cell. I uh, will give you some characteristics of this. Uh, the, this particular one is called alkaline fuel cell because it alkali some form of alkali liquid alkali is actually the electrolyte here ok. That is why it is called alkaline fuel cell. The direct methanol fuel cell although we have been talking about in other cases it is the uh, hydrogen the fuel is hydrogen or carbon monoxide or a mixture of them. But uh, methanol, methanol can also be directly oxidized in some of the fuel cells and one can 
get energy out of it. So, uh, because the fuel is methanol, so it is methanol fuel cell, direct methanol fuel cell, not hydrogen or gaseous fuel cell, it is actually a liquid fuel cell. A phosphoric acid fuel cell has been termed because once again the electrolyte, just like here alkali is the electrolyte, here acid is an electrolyte. Uh, so, phosphoric acid is used as the electrolyte here and uh, obviously, the charge carriers here is the hydroxyl ion whereas, the charge carrier here uh, is the hydrogen ion. Okay. So, this is a uh, liquid, uh, liquid uh, acid which becomes uh, the electrolyte here. Uh, proton or the polymer exchange membrane fuel cell uh, the, just like phosphoric acid fuel cell here is also a hydrogen ion conductor, but this is not in the liquid form. This is a polymer, a particular polymer which is having a sufficient amount of hydrogen ion conductivity and that is used as the electrolyte. So, here compared to phosphoric acid, this is a solid electrolyte, but both of them the conducting species or the charge carrier is basically hydrogen ion. So, the protons are the basic charge carriers and one can make membranes. Uh, in fact, the electrolyte in this case is called the membrane because it uh, preferentially <coughs> allows hydrogen ion to pass through. Then there is a another uh, type of fuel cell where electrolyte is uh, once again uh, liquid, but at a sufficiently higher temperature fairly high temperature about 600 to 800 degree centigrade. So, this is a carbonate liquid carbonates and that carbonate ion is the uh, charge carrying species and this is a high temperature a moderate temperature I can say moderate temperature fuel cell where molten carbonates uh, are normally used as the electrolyte. The operating temperatures of these things are at different temperatures. This is more or less room temperature, these are again slightly above room temperature, I will give you some temperature range, but they operate at different temperature ranges. And um, uh, solid oxide fuel cell uh, is once again a all solid state, all solid state uh, uh, device where uh, the electrolyte is a solid, uh, the electrodes are also solid and the fuel is only gas. So, the fuel uh, is uh, either hydrogen carbon monoxide or some hydrocarbons like uh, natural gas mixture of hydrocarbons like natural gas and so on. It can be used quite uh, easily. Uh, one of the reason is uh, it operates at a fairly high temperature. The originally it used to operate about 900 to 1000 degree centigrade primarily because uh, the electrolyte zirconia uh, does not have uh, very high ionic conductivity or the overall conductivity is relatively low. So, sufficient conductivity uh, is ob obtained only at a higher temperature. Okay. So, that is the reason uh, this is uh, uh, the kind of operating temperature is highest among all the uh, fuel cells listed here. Of course, there is a tendency to uh, the research is going on to reduce the operating temperature uh, we will look at it. Then. So, this is a all solid state fuel cell and uh, all ceramic fuel cell. So, all the components are ceramic components and they must withstand fairly high temperatures. So, our topic of discussion is primarily concentrated will be concentrated on the solid oxide fuel cell. Well, advantages of fuel cells in general are as follows high efficiency we will explain why it is high efficiency, the conversion efficiency, the chemical to electrical energy conversion efficiency is uh, extremely high, in fact higher than any other system one can think of. Fuel diversification that means, in some of the fuel cells not all, there are different kind of fuels can be uh, used. Although they are all gaseous fuels uh, except in DMFC all the, uh, the gaseous fuels, but um, uh, different kind of either hydrocarbon or hydrogen can be used, carbon monoxide can be used 
or a mixture of hydrogen and carbon monoxide or in some cases uh, hydrocarbons can be directly fed into the system. So, one can have different kind of fuels, but the most important characteristics is its high efficiency. Zero emission and uh, silent well compared to many other uh, mechanical systems like uh, generators, um, gas generators and so on or steam generators. Uh, you, you do not uh, do not have a moving part here, you are basically it is basically a stationary system uh, except uh, for uh, gas supply and uh, air supply you need some blowers and so on, but otherwise uh, the basic material basic system is stationary, you do not have a moving part that is why it is also silent, but zero emission that is another very important zero emission in the sense here we are basically talking about carbon dioxide emission. Uh, provided of course, provided of course, one uses uh, hydrogen as the uh, fuel, because when hydrogen gets burnt, it actually the products of combustion is nothing but H 2 O. So, we do not generate uh, carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide that is one uh, environmental issue. Other emission is there is no particulates. If you are talking about a thermal power plant where solid fuel is burnt, you generate huge amount of particulates, okay, particulate uh, emission and that emission is not there in this case. So, we can say it is a zero emission. So, it is a very basically a clean energy system, it is a clean energy system, environmentally uh, benign system and those are the uh, reasons why fuel cell research has become a very uh, uh, important and fascinating uh, in these days. Enabling technology because uh, it uh, gives you some other uh, technology. For example, fuel cell technology is also giving you to automobile research because how the fuel cells can be used in uh, battery operated or electric vehicles. Electric vehicles uh, is another area where fuel cell uh, or that a dependent on the uh, fuel cell technology development. So, these are some of the advantages, but most important advantage is high efficiency. That means, the conversion efficiency most of the chemical energy of the fuel is converted into electricity or electrical power. Well, we will do that. So, of course, finally, as I mentioned, I have explained uh, that it is a clean and efficient energy conversion device. So, when you are talking about uh, environmental pollution and uh, um, also we are talking about the um, carbon economy to the hydrogen economy. That means, uh, we have to burn or generate let, less of carbon dioxide uh, in the environment. This is one of the techniques by which one can reduce carbon, carbon dioxide in the environment. This is the reason why it is more highly efficient system, uh, system of energy conversion. If you are talking about a thermal power plant, then the chemical energy of the solid fuel coal uh, is first converted to thermal energy, because it is uh, normal burning uh, to generate thermal energy. So, that thermal energy generates steam and that steam again goes to the steam turbine and generate uh, electricity. So, it goes through a large number of conversion steps. So, directly chemical energy is not getting converted into the electrical energy. So, uh, at each step there will be a lot of loss and uh, therefore, the overall efficiency is not very high only 30 to 35 percent of the chemical energy is basically converted to the electrical energy and uh, 65 to <coughs> 70 percent uh, is actually lost. So, it is a huge loss so far as when you are talking about uh, the power generation. Whereas, if you talk about a fuel cell, it is an electrochemical conversion, it is a one step process. Okay. So, it does not go through a multiple step. So, it is a one step process of chemical energy is directly getting converted to electrical energy and therefore, the theoretically it is a very, very efficient process. Okay. So, of course, there will be losses for because of many other reasons, but uh, in principle 
it is a one step process and therefore, and the conversion efficiency has to be very high. Uh, the electrical efficiency as such can be as high as 80 to 90 percent, but the overall plant efficiency depending on uh, many other features it can come down to about 40 to 50 percent. We will look into that uh, later on why such losses take place and where exactly uh, we lose some of the energy. But in principle uh, it is very high compared to thermal power plant uh, 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 because both of them are basically looking at the energy generation, the conversion of uh, chemical energy to the electrical energy. Well, these are some of the working principle of different types of fuel cells. To start with the alkaline fuel cell or alkali fuel cell, uh, basically you have two different components. One is the fuel compartment and the other is the oxidant, oxidant compartment either it can be pure oxygen or mostly air. Uh, you have electrodes this is one electrode and this is another electrode. So, this is an anode and this is a cathode. So, there is uh, interfacial reactions and this is of course, the electrolyte. Okay. So, this is the electrolyte uh, some kind of alkali and that actually has OH ions which are mobile in this case. So, OH ion because it is a negatively charged. So, it is uh, actually um, takes the oxygen from this side and then it goes to the other side and then sorry one can also look at it from the other point of view the hydrogen here. The hydrogen actually uh, um, combines with the OH. Uh, here oxygen uh, is uh, actually goes to the oxygen ion and it takes up electron from here whereas, hydrogen gives the electron there. So, the electron goes to this and then this electron gives uh, uh, donates the oxygen atom. So, it becomes oxygen ion. So, and then hydroxyl ion moves to this and combines with hydrogen. So, and becomes the water. So, this is uh, uh, the reaction for alkali fuel cells and if you have hydrogen ion or hydrogen ion is the conductor it moves to the opposite direction uh, and then you have a, a, a electrolyte which may be a phosphoric acid fuel cell a phosphoric acid as the uh, electrolyte or as I mentioned earlier a polymer. Uh, incidentally, it is a uh, it is a very uh, commercially available particular uh, very specific polymer having a very high hydrogen ion conductivity which is called naphion and uh, that is the most efficient uh, hydrogen ion conductor so far as the solid polymers are concerned. And uh, uh, then this is the source of hydrogen and uh, hydrogen gets ionized there, then it is become hydrogen ion, it moves to this direction, it combines with the oxygen on this side and it releases, uh, it takes up the electron from there and uh, the electron moves in the uh, outer circuit and hydrogen ion moves in the uh, internal circuit. So, internally it is a charge carrier is a hydrogen and externally of course, there is a electron flow. So, you can generate current in the, and a load can be attached to that. So, oxygen comes from one side, hydrogen comes from the other side and they combine electrochemically and ultimately water goes there. So, on this side hydrogen and water goes on the same side whereas, for this system oxygen and water is on the same side. So, hydrogen comes from the other side combines with oxygen and releases water as the product of conversion. Here oxygen comes from other side and uh, it combines with hydrogen and water 
uh, is released on the same side as the hydrogen. So, there is a continuous flow of hydrogen here, there is a continuous flow of hydrogen there also and on this side there is a continuous flow, flow of oxygen. So, as long as these flows are maintained you can generate electrons or you can generate current on the outer circuit and a load can be connected to that. The particular solid uh, particular electro uh, fuel cell which we are interested in uh, is uh, a solid oxide fuel cell and that is as I said it is all solid state fuel cell everything is solid here and the electrolyte is an oxygen ion conductor. This is an OH ion conductor, this is an hydrogen ion conductor and this is an oxygen ion conductor. So, uh, because we are talking about a electrochemical system, so uh, there may be possibilities of different electrolytes and according to we choose the electrodes. So, uh, this is hydroxyl ion, this is hydrogen ion and this is an example of oxygen ion. So, oxygen ion uh, is the conducting uh, conduction is the electrolyte, electrolyte conducts oxygen ion and on this side you have anode, this is a cathode, uh, on this side you supply air and here it is reverse to this, so, this is hydrogen, this is oxygen, so uh, the cathode and anode will be different. Uh, so, uh, here um, oxygen or air is supplied to this and this is get ionized on this side and then oxygen moves there. Oxygen moves there and combines with the fuel may be hydrogen carbon monoxide. So, once again the product of combustion is on the uh, hydrogen fuel side and air comes from the other side okay. and you produce a voltage here and this is the load on the external circuit otherwise the basic principle is same. The only thing the difference here is the mobile species or the charge species of the electrolyte is oxygen ion and they are all solid state. So, we will see what are the different materials we use for this kind of a system, but this is the basic principle by which one can generate <coughs> electricity or power electrical power from the chemical potential or the chemical energy of the uh, fuel of this fuel. Well, uh, referring to the uh, solid oxide fuel cell, uh, we will go into the little details, uh, the electrode reactions, charge and mass transport in SOFC or solid oxide fuel cell. Now, once again this is the schematic of the system of the cell, this is basically uh, a what we call the electrode or the membrane electrode assembly. So, this is only a part of the, the main uh, reaction site, okay, the main reaction site where you have uh, the cathode, you have the electrolyte and the anode all in the solid state. Uh, oxygen is moving. Now, cathode uh, both cathode because we have a uh, gaseous fuel and gaseous oxygen. So, the reaction electrochemical reaction or the charge transfer is basically taking place at this interface okay, electrolyte electrode interface either the cathode electrolyte interface or the anode electrolyte interface. So, the gaseous fuel or the gaseous uh, oxidant has to come in contact with this interface and uh, the triple phase boundary that means one is the cathode, electrolyte and the gaseous environment. So, these are the triple phase boundaries like this, these are the reaction sites where this kind of reaction is taking place. The oxygen because this is the oxygen side, the oxygen uh, the cathode side. So, the uh, oxygen plus 4 electrons give rise to 2 oxy O minus. So, at this interface this reaction is taking place. So, the reaction sites are very important, higher is the reaction site, higher is the conversion and uh, better is the uh, current carrying capacity or the current generating capacity. So, more electrons will be generated and uh, one can draw more and more current. So, it cannot be a it cannot be a 
completely dense material, it has to be a porous material. So, that through the pores molecular diffusion takes place, oxygen comes to the surface then gets atomized and it gets the electron from this and gets ionized. So, once the oxygen gets ionized this material the electrolyte is an ox specifically an oxygen ion conductor. So, oxygen because there will be a potential difference there will be high poten high oxygen potential on this side and there is a low oxygen potential because the fuel has a reducing condition low oxygen potential. So, from high oxygen potential the there is a um, there is a uh, kind of uh, uh, tendency of uh, driving force in fact, the driving force uh, will be there for the oxygen to move from this side to that side from the higher oxygen potential on this side to the lower oxygen potential on this side. So, oxygen ion will move along the uh, through the bulk of the electrolyte. Now, this can move because this electrolyte has been chosen in such a way that it has a very high oxygen ion conductivity, there is no electronic conductivity in this. So, the electrolytes can be used or electrolytes as per definition they will have only ionic conductivity and no electronic conductivity. And uh, so, the oxygen ion will move there and then it will combine with hydrogen in this manner, hydrogen plus oxygen ion will generate um, uh, water and then it will release electron. So, the electron will flow from this side to this load to this side and this will continue. So, that is uh, the kind of principle what we have discussed earlier also. The only thing we want to uh, introduce here or add is both cathode and the anode has to be a porous has to be a porous material. Whereas, the electrolyte has to be completely dense. So, this is one of the major requirement uh, of this kind of a system. The membrane electrolyte assembly one can say this compact uh, layer yeah, can be called as a membrane electrolyte assembly. Membrane is basically an electrolyte, membrane electrode assembly not the electrolyte, membrane electrode assembly, membrane basically because it has a uh, semi permeability through only through oxygen, no hydrogen can go through, no other gas can pass through, only oxygen ion can pass through. So, it is basically acting as a membrane although physically it is a very dense material. This oxygen permeability is because of the oxygen vacancy. So, it is uh, lattice oxygen is going through there is no physical pores in it. So, this electrolyte has to be completely dense so that oxygen molecular oxygen diffusion is avoided molecules oxygen molecule can should not pass through and then combined with hydrogen if that that becomes so then it is only a thermal uh, combustion it is not an electrochemical combustion. So, electrical energy cannot be generated by that process. So, there should not be any porous or continuity of the pores okay. even if some small pore is there it has to be. Uh, discontinuous or a entrapped pores. Okay. So, this is one of the major requirements. So, far as the solid oxide fuel cell is concerned the both the cathode and the anode material has to be uh, porous material whereas, the electrolyte has to be completely dense material and it has to be uh, it uh, because some such material is already available with us uh, like zirconium oxide, uh, zirconium dioxide we have seen earlier calcium stabilized or ETS stabilized zirconium dioxide can act as a very good oxygen ion conductor and therefore, uh, these are the um, materials one can use. We will come to that what are the different materials possible to use either as the cathode material or the anode material. In case of carbon monoxide this is the again a very similar reaction takes place instead of hydrogen one can have carbon monoxide and then high oxygen. Uh, uh, and uh, carbon dioxide. So, uh, it again releases two electrons here. Uh, so, whether it is the fuel is a car hydrogen or carbon monoxide or a mixture of them these are the oxidation reaction which is taking place on the anode side and 
uh, there is a ionization of oxygen ion on the cathode side. Okay. So, there is a very high oxygen potential uh, on the cathode side, whereas there is a very low oxygen potential on the um, anode side and this is a reducing highly reducing condition and this is a highly oxidizing condition. Uh, so, this is also another requirement of this electrolyte because on one side of the electrolyte is a very high oxygen potential, uh, very high oxidizing condition on the other side is a very high reducing condition because hydrogen is a highly highly reducing. Okay. So, this electrolyte must be thermodynamically stable both at oxygen high oxygen potential as well as low oxygen potential otherwise this material will uh, get reduced or oxidized. So, there will be non stoichiometric set in uh, because many of the oxides many of the oxides in presence of hydrogen can reduce to its corresponding metal. So, uh, one has to choose a particular electrolyte which should not be reduced even in presence of hydrogen a reducing gas like hydrogen should not uh, reduce its corresponding metal and that is also at a higher temperature. Normally many of the oxides many of the oxide uh, will get reduced uh, at a higher temperature in presence of hydrogen, but one has to choose uh, a electrolyte in this case for solid oxide fuel cell to be uh, successful or uh, operating uh, one has to choose a very stable oxide uh, which is uh, stable not only at a very highly oxidizing condition like oxygen pure oxygen or highly reducing condition like pure hydrogen. So, uh, this is once again a challenge, but fortunately fortunately we have that kind of a material in the form of stabilized zirconia. A zirconia is a highly st stable oxide its melting point is very high and at the same time its non stoichiometry is extremely low that means it does not get stabilized that does not get oxidized or reduced either in the presence of hydrogen or in the presence of oxygen. So, it is uh, uh, that is how uh, solid oxide fuel cell has been really su a success success in the sense one can demonstrate at least in the lab scale that certain thing is happening commercial success is still to come, but uh, many prototypes are available several kilowatts hundreds of kilowatts of power can be generated from uh, such systems. Well, next comes there are few comparisons few in terms of uh, uh, the materials used, the temperature of operation, the kind of fuel one can use in different kind of fuel cell. We have already introduced few varieties of fuel cells. So, these are some comparison between them uh, how where exactly solid oxide fuel cell stands is it a good one it is a bad one in this uh, uh, where exactly uh, how exactly it is compared with other systems of uh, energy conversion like fuel cells. So, fuel cell is not unique that way SOFC is not unique there are many varieties of fuel cells. So, one should have a comparison between them. Uh, this is PAFC the phosphoric acid fuel cell okay. this is phosphoric acid fuel cell the electrolyte as I mentioned is orthophosphoric acid uh, whereas, PEM that is the proton uh, or polymer electrolyte membr uh, membrane fuel cell uh, sometimes called proton uh, membrane fuel cell it is actually as I mentioned it is the sulfonic acid in some polymer and that is the nafion its trade name is rafion and is produced by dupont and it is a worldwide famous uh, polymer which has a um, uh, sufficient hydrogen and conductivity and can be used very easily in polymer electrolyte membrane fuel cells and uh, there have been extensive research whether an alternative polymer can be found out uh, unfortunately uh, so far uh, no other polymer has been found with that kind of properties. Uh, so, there have been some atoms there are some other uh, polymers available, but uh, the performance is not as good as that of nafion. Uh, in case of MCFC that means the molten carbonate fuel cell uh, it is a molten carbonate it is actually a eutectic mixture of lithium and potassium carbonate uh, which 
uh, melts at a relatively low temperature and that is the electrolyte where the carbonate ion is the species which is conducting. And solid oxide fuel cell is basically one can use uh, calcium oxide no doubt, but uh, as we have seen earlier the yttrium stabilized zirconia has a much higher uh, ionic conductivity or overall conductivity compared to zirconia, uh, calcium stabilized zirconia. So, although yttrium is slightly uh, costlier, but one can get the advantage of higher conductivity. So, yttrium stabilized zirconia is the standard material used as the electrolyte and uh, as we have just discussed few minutes back that it uh, has to be stable both at uh, reducing as well as oxidizing conditions and that satisfy uh, this particular material satisfies that condition. The operating temperature uh, of PAFC or the phosphoric acid fuel cell is about 180 to 200 degrees uh, whereas, PEM fuel cell or polymer electrolyte fuel cell has an operating temperature of around 80 to 100 degrees centigrade because beyond that the polymer is not stable. So, one has to limit to uh, this kind of an operating temperature. Uh, MCFC uh, although it is mentioned 600 to 700 it can go up to 800 degrees also, but normal temperature is around 600 to 700 degrees centigrade where this uh, liquid carbon uh, the, the mixture of carbonate actually melts in a new tactic uh, mixture. This operating temperature is normally written here as 650 to 1000 actually when we start when people started using solid oxide fuel cell the temperature of operation was quite high about 900 to 1000 degree centigrade and through because of various kinds of research and uh, uh, um, materials um, invention or discovery of different materials or development of different materials uh, the temperature is going coming down slowly currently it is about 650 to about 800 degree centigrade mostly 800 is the limit now uh, still research is going on whether the temperature can be further lower down to about 500 to 400 degree centigrade. So, there are certain advantages although some disadvantages are also there, but uh, operating with a high temperature system is always a uh, difficult system difficult to operate and therefore, um, there is always uh, a tendency to lower the temperature. So, we have at this moment uh, a group of solid oxide fuel cell what is called LTSOFC that means <coughs> low temperature or intermediate temperature fuel cells and so on. So, L <coughs> LT or IT, IT uh, SOFC means intermediate temperature which is the order of about 600 to 800 degrees whereas, LT means below 600 degrees. So, uh, there is always a uh, attempt to reduce temperature of operation as much as possible. Fuel what is the kind of fuel? Uh, in all these particularly these two phosphoric acid fuel cell and PEM fuel cell the polymer electrolyte fuel cell one needs a very high pure hydrogen very very pure hydrogen uh, uh, not contaminated with certain species like carbon monoxide and so on. So, this is one of the limitations one can say that you need very pure hydrogen to operate because there are some catalysts. Uh, and those catalysts are getting poisoned by presence of carbon monoxide. Uh, whereas, this high temperature or uh, the MCFC uh, molten carbon fuel cell can operate both with hydrogen and carbon monoxide. So, there is no problem so far as the carbon monoxide is concerned there is no uh, uh, platinum catalyst here. All these both of them need some plat platinum catalyst we are not going to the details why the platinum is needed, but, but without the platinum catalyst very fine dispersion of platinum catalyst uh, this kind of system do not work. Uh, we do not need any platinum catalyst here with the catalyst is oxide catalyst. So, the uh, this can operate with hydrogen natural gas even synthetic gas. So, one can generate coal uh, synthetic gas from coal and then burn it one has to find out what is the total overall efficiency. So, because efficiency is one of the driving force for developing uh, this kind of systems. 
here these are efficiency the bulk parts efficiencies have been put here is about uh, 40 percent here 40 percent overall efficiency 30 to 30 40 percent and then 40 to 44 percent or 40 to 45 you can say although it has been mentioned 43 44 specifically but is around 40 to 45 percent and solid oxide fuel cell can go as high as 30 50 to 60 okay uh, so uh, this of course has some conditions because one has to uh, one has to have utility of the thermal um, thermal energy also we'll look into that what exactly it means there are few other aspects on which the comparison can still be made with the same set of uh, fuel cells for example applications stationary power power systems transportation system as i've said uh, pem the polymer electrolyte fuel cell are be primarily getting developed for the uh, electrically operated automotive systems and uh, prototypes are already available for a large number of the last 10 years or so uh, the prototypes are running uh, in many of the many countries particularly in canada and uh, some of the european countries uh, transportation systems uh, are available uh, Japanese cars are also being run uh, with PEM fuel cells. So, that is one of the driving force the application, so far as the application area is concerned. But in addition one can also use as a stationary power so auxiliary power systems and so on. Uh, this is again a stationary power system uh, even uh, MCFC have been developed to a large extent almost up to 1 megawatt of uh, power systems can be have been uh, demonstrated, but commercial uh, commercially many of them are still not available available and they are available, but it is not economic uh, all the time. So, under specific conditions one can always use that. Uh, SOFC is being considered once again as a uh, stationary power source because of its high uh, conversion efficiency 50 to 60 percent conversion efficiency is fairly high uh, and uh, uh, one can use it for auxiliary power systems because it contains ceramic materials. So, it cannot take lot of vibrations as well as uh, fluctuations of temperature. So, they are brittle materials and one has to well, that is one of the major limitations otherwise the driving force for developing such kind of systems is basically the high energy efficiency. Uh, these are some of the other remarks specially markets uh, specialty markets due to high cost. Um, then getting the most attention due to its potential in the vehicles portable power and small stationary powers less than 200 kilowatts. So, several hundred kilowatts of power, uh, of power, um, power station or uh, energy systems can be uh, has been built with fuel cells. Uh, in fact, uh, phosphoric acid fuel cell uh, has gone up to megawatts again. Uh, MCFC uh, the product focuses on commercial industry, commercial, industrial, institutional as well as specialty power markets. So, once again there are large number of areas or industrial uh, situations where you need auxiliary power, you need continuous power, you need uh, captive power. So, those things can be thought of from MCFC and this is once again for high efficiency and low manufacturing well relatively low manufacturing cost per kilowatt, but uh, running cost may be low, but uh, power uh, and the total overall cost is not that low. So, one has to have a question mark here. Oh, this is uh, already going down. Well, I will complete our discussion for the class for this class with what are the specific advantages of fuel cells, uh, solid oxide fuel cell in particular. Uh, this is uh, environment friendly in the sense uh, it is does not produce 
N O X, S O X uh, and uh, particulate emissions and quiet operation which is true for many of the uh, fuel cells. High operating temperature this is an advantage in some cases and for some consideration is an advantage because the kinetics of the process is very high. So, one can draw very high currents. Okay. So, uh, actually current is one of the limitations in most of the fuel cells the operating voltage or the open circuit voltage of each cell is low it is within 1 volt, uh, but one has to draw a very large current. So, the kinetics must be fast enough and uh, operating temperatures of 650 to 800 degrees are actually high temperature where kinetics is so quite fast and therefore, one can get high efficiency. So, that is an advantage, but the operating temperature is also a disadvantage. Uh, high operating temperature is also disadvantage from the materials point of view and the construction point of view or fabrication point of view. Uh, fuel cell, fuel to electrical efficiency particularly for solid oxide fuel cell there are two situations one is 35 to 40 percent without recycling of uh, the thermal energy and it can go up to 60 percent with recycling of heat which means you see whenever this chemical reaction is taking place uh, H 2 plus O 2 equal to H 2 O. This has two uh, ways of two different types of uh, output one is the thermal energy it is the uh, exothermicity of the process as well as the electrochemical combustion. So, the electrochemical combustion of the free energy change the free energy change give rise to the electrical EMF, but there is a exothermic reaction. So, it also gives rise to a lot of heat. Now, whenever that such reaction is taking place all the energy is not getting converted into electrical energy loss quite a few quite a size, uh, fraction of that also goes, goes to the heat energy. So, it continuously generates heats. So, that is also there is also a possible way to use that heat and maybe uh, use it for some other purposes not to generate electricity, but one can also generate electricity using some micro turbines what they call a micro turbines that means, uh, the heat can be used uh, the uh, combustion the product of combustion is basically a um, hot gas that hot gas can be used to generate a gas turbine or move a gas turbine and from that also electricity can be generated. So, this is what if you combine that Okay. what we call sometimes called the combined cycle uh, solid oxide fuel cell. So, by that uh, recovering the heat energy also one can generate electricity and by that the total efficiency can be as high as 60 percent. Okay. So, the last one is all solid state because everything is solid everything is uh, high temperature stable uh, basically they are ceramic materials. So, they are stable and uh, as uh, solid state had its own advantage primarily the corrosion resistance in liquid electrolytes if the liquids are there there is electrochemical uh, reaction and whatever is in com coming in contact the cathodes and the anodes one has to find out choose the right kind of material so that there is no corrosion. So, as uh, first whether you talk, talk about phosphoric acid or alkali they are corrosive liquids and one has to be very uh, I mean uh, cautious about choosing the particular material. However, uh, when it is all solid state that kind of liquid corrosion is not there, but the problem will be there for high temperature. So, both the systems have its own pros and cons, but the advantage is we can have a very high conversion efficiency. Okay. So, with this we come to the end of this class we will continue the discussion in the next class. Thank you. Thank you for your attention.